Okay. So, um, I guess, first of all, does anyone have, I have some organizational things to talk about, but does anyone have uh, questions, you know, math wise or otherwise? Uh, okay, so someone has asked in the chat, uh, Selena has asked, uh, when will the YouTube link be shared? Um, I can, let's see, I can send, can, can you see my, can you see Channel. just the whiteboard right now? Or can you see my other screen? Whiteboard. Just the whiteboard, okay. Let me, that's fine. Let me just, um, I'll do that right now and just share with you the lectures. I have, um, three of the four lectures from last week uploaded. I forgot to record the first lecture, but that was pretty organizational. Uh, so you are, uh, okay, so one sec, Fiona. So, so just regarding the recorded lectures, I'm about to share the link. Um, just, um, th there is no substitute to, you know, really like attending and participating. Yes, Leanne, the, the channel is called IntelliChoice Math and I'm about to post the link. There we, yeah, thank you. How do you pronounce, is it, um, how do you pronounce your name? Is it, um, Syrah? It's Chira. Chira, okay, great, thanks Chira. Yes, that, that is, that looks like the, the link. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, you're welcome to review those things, but don't like not come to the lecture, you know, and rely on those, um, yeah, of course, yeah, you're welcome. Um, Okay, and then now Fiona, you asked, is the homework grade an actual number uh, grade or a completion grade? Okay, so that's a great question. So we're going to, let's, um, okay, so your homework uh, is an actual grade. It's an actual number, uh, and it's out of, the, the total number of points is just the number of problems there are on that homework. So for homework one, there were 24 problems. And so um, your tutor, if, if your tutor has not already, they will, you know, sometime between now and Wednesday, um, get back to you with your grade. And if you made below a B minus, and they'll let you know if you made a B minus, so you don't have to calculate that. If you made below a B minus, you'll be required to do corrections. Uh, the corrections don't have a due date, so you can take your time with them. You can kind of think about them. You can come to as many office hours as you want until the end of the semester. Just get your corrections in by like the second to last week, okay? Um, so the corrections will like replace your your first grade. So just uh, with, uh, so if, you, if you've missed like say problem five, you know, just get a blank sheet of paper and redo problem five, okay? Most people uh, so far, not all the grades have come in, but most people are making below B minus, which is totally fine. I mean, the homework is is not, um, it's not like plug and chug, right? You, you really kind of have to think about these things and um, some of the questions are kind of long. So don't like, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, not like a bad thing to make below B minus. In fact, I mean, some of these questions I have to think about, like I have to get a piece of paper, I have to like do them, okay? So don't feel bad, like uh, the majority of people are making far below a B minus and that's totally fine. That's why we're doing the corrections. And the corrections are where you're really gonna learn sort of what is going on. Um, don't suffer through the home, like if it's, t if it's taking hours, don't just suffer, like come to the office hours and uh, that's really the, the best time to clarify it. You know, I can do s some clarification uh, regarding the homework and the lecture, but this is more about the content. You know, if you really need help, the office hours are really great. And the tutors are great. I, I think many of you have gone to the office hours and um, the tutors have given me great feedback, like that the office hours are going well and that they're enjoying working with you all. So um, yeah, keep doing that. Um, I, I Someone asked just before, what whether you need to make a, above a B minus in both classes to get the scholarship. So I, I said something, but I'm, I'm going to take that back and I'm gonna think about this. Um, I, I think it's fair. I think it would be fair to the other class, um, the reading class to have the rule be, you have to make a, uh, above a B minus, you know, uh, either a B minus or better in both classes to get the scholarship. I, I think that would make the most sense. So that way we don't have people making, you know, A's in one class and C's in the other. Um, that would be kind of skewed. So I think um, we'll establish that you need to make a B minus or better in both classes. Um, and there will be, so, okay, let me, let me, I've written some of this stuff out because I wanted to, okay, I'll, 
I'll get back to this uh, one sec. Um, right, so there will be, so this is the point I just wanted to say, there will, we're not gonna be grading the ninth graders on the same scale as the 12th graders. Like in terms of homework, in terms of your grade, that will be graded on the same scale. Like if you, if a ninth grader misses 10 questions and the 12th grader misses one, uh, the ninth grader will get a uh, commensurately uh, lower grade, but there will be a curve at the end of the course for all the ninth graders and a different curve for all the 10th graders and a different curve for all the 11th graders and a different curve for all the 12th graders. And the most generous curve will be for the ninth graders because the ninth graders are not familiar with uh, a lot of this material, if any. And so uh, it's not really fair, you know, to, to hold them to the same standard as the, the 12th graders. So the 12th graders might get like a maybe three point curve. Um, there are some 12th graders in the course so far who have a perfect score. So if that keeps, you know, if, if someone actually makes a perfect score in the class, then there will be no curve. Um, okay. Um, so don't like freak out over your grade, but just uh, do these corrections. That's really the, the best uh, way to ensure that you're going to be above a B minus. Um, okay. Other sort of organizational things before we actually start. Uh, let's see. This, this got moved. Okay. Did anyone try to attend Gabe's office hours on Saturday? Saturday morning, I think. Is it uh, Mauricio? You raised your hand, I think. Do you have? No. Okay. So no one, no one tried to attend. I'm guessing from the silence. Um, okay, that's fine. We just kind of wanted to know. Okay, a few people have have chatted. Uh, are we able to know our grade? Like to check it throughout the course? Yes. So. Okay, so this is not related to Gabe's office hours. Um, Sabella, I think is how you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But yes, uh, if you ever want to know your grade, just ask your, just ask your tutor and they'll send you like all the grades you've made so far. Um, and Mauricio has asked me, you can't see this in the chat because he sent it privately, but he has a question. Okay, Mauricio, let's, let's save it to the end. And uh, if I can't answer your question, you can go to the office hours today. Okay, so Gabe has decided regarding this, by the way, can you see my cursor? I feel like I keep asking this. Can you yeah. see my mouse here? Yeah, see okay, great, great. That helps. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Um, okay, thanks. So Gabe is going to move his office hours to Friday from 10 to noon. That, that was originally like kind of my office hours, but um, Gabe is super, uh, he, he has so much more experience at teaching than me and actually all the other tutors because we're all in college. Uh, and Gay, I mean, he's a fantastic resource, um, lots of experience. So, uh, and, and Friday, you know, Friday is the day the homework is due. And so I'm assuming that many people will be wanting to go to office hours. And, and Gabe is like very thoughtful and he's prepared a bunch of uh, questions and uh, really good sort of activities for you all. So hey, Friday, I'm online. I just want to say to everybody, yeah, please come and I'll help you no matter what grade you're in. I've been doing this for 10 years and I know what your problems are, and I can definitely help you. So come on in. By the way, I have a Thursday afternoon standard office hours also from three to five, and we just changed a Saturday for, as you said, uh, sorry, I changed my previous Saturday thing to this Friday, 10 to 12. So Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, yeah, please attend. Thanks, Gabe, yeah, thanks. It's, it's a great, yeah. And honestly, you know, attend as many of these office hours as you can, even if you just want to talk to these people. They're very interesting. Um, yes, uh, Chira, uh, is it Chira? Chira, Chira, Chira okay, Chira. Can you please change the schedule on the, the schedule on the link? Yes, like on the website? With the calendar, yes, I can do that, I assume. Yes, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that right after this, sure. And someone else had a question? No. Okay. Okay. Here's a request uh, from some of the tutors. Um, so please submit your homework uh, as, a P as a single PDF if possible. And I sent some links to apps, to free phone apps that you can use to do that. Um, please write in black ink. Okay. The pencil can like, the pencil kind of reflects light and it's sort of, uh, the, the camera has a hard time picking it up and it can be very difficult to read. So uh, black ink is great. And uh, please keep everything in order. It's it's really tough to like sort through, the, you know, things that are out of order. Okay, great. 
Okay, and then we talked about homework grades. Okay, so you'll be able to do corrections. There's no deadline for the corrections, but I recommend doing them soon. And homework, homework two is due Friday. So I, I sent out a link like early this morning uh, regarding homework two, okay? So sort of big picture um, as to where we are in terms of the actual math. So last week we talked about, can anyone remind, can, can anyone kind of give me the big picture of what we did last week? Matrixes? Yep, so that's, that's maybe a smaller picture because that's a subset of what we talked about. More generally, what did we talk about? Systems of equations. We talked it good. We talked about, yeah, yeah, we talked about systems and Nishan has just kind of said exactly what I was looking for, which is line. <laughs> yeah, so we talked about the idea of, you know, linearity and, you know, what it means um, to have a line, you know, how many points you need to define a line. Uh, just very big picture things. We talked about slope intercept form, point slope form. We talked about what makes lines parallel, what makes them perpendicular. Um, and then, yeah, we talked about systems towards the end on the last two days. So now we're going to sort of, uh, so this week is, is, is really interesting, okay? And we're going to kind of um, continue with lines for a little bit. And in fact, that what, you, what we learned last week will be very important for what we learned this week. Um, and we're also going to talk about, towards the end of the week, we're gonna talk about something that's more scientific in nature and something that, that, that will help you in your science classes. Um, but that is everywhere on the SAT as well. And that is this, this uh, study of dimensional analysis. Okay, so those are sort of the big uh, points for this week. So uh, today we're gonna talk about inequalities. So um, I'd like to, the entire structure of this lecture will be comparing the nature of equalities to inequalities, okay? And I'd like to ask you, which one is more specific? An equality or an inequality? Quality. Quality. And why would you say that? Because it says the exact value of like a variable and an inequality gives gives us just like a range of answers. Very good. Yes. That's that's very nicely said. So uh yeah, so generally an inequality, uh I know when I say an equality, it kind of sounds like inequality. So, but but yes, an, an, uh, an equality. Uh, gives you, so say, so this is inequality, right? And if I were to plot this on a line, this is my x-axis, and this just gives me a point, right? Whereas say I had something like x is greater than one, this refers to a whole range of numbers, right? And in fact, this would look something like this, where this is the point one. So all of these numbers are sort of described by this one statement. So in a sense, it's more general, and the inequality is more general. Um, can anyone think of famous, um, so, so with this in mind, okay, equalities are sort of um, more, um, you, you'll see them more in, you know, physics and math in general. I mean, you'll see it, it's, it's often, you know, nature is very precise and uh, all the famous like, you know, F equals MA or whatever, right? These famous E equals MT squared, whatever you want to think of. These are all equalities, right? But there are some famous inequalities. And can anyone think of, uh, can anyone remind me of some famous inequalities? Maybe in uh, from your science classes or otherwise. The uh, Clarkson inequality. Okay, can you describe, what, what is that? Um, so it's like, it's like used to measure space using um, like stigma. So like, it's like F plus, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's like F plus G uh, over two, take the absolute value of that, uh, and then that's raised to the exponent of like f, and then plus f minus g over two absolute value raised to the y. Okay, so I actually haven't seen this before. So this is pretty impressive that you know this. <laughs> uh, that, that's really cool. And so, what? Where's the equality? Where's the inequality in here? What is this saying? Uh, so the stigma. It ranges from, so it's it's one over P plus one over Q equals one. I mean, it's greater than one. So that's like the, that that's the inequality on like the number line. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read about this. This is really interesting. Cool, thanks. Um, so, okay, so, so we have a nice example of an inequality and I actually am not familiar with this. So this is really, this is good for me actually to learn. But just to sort of get, you exposed to some other famous inequalities to show you the value of what we're doing. 
Um, how about um, does, has any does anyone uh, remember? You know, this is triangle. The, the triangle inequality. Has anyone heard of this? Uh, in fact, I, I have a yes. feeling. Go ahead. Um, it says that for any triangle, the sum of the lengths of two sides must be greater than or equal to the length of the remaining side. That's right. And it's not just any two sides. It's the sum of the, the shorter two sides. Right. So if this is A, this is B, and this is C, the triangle inequality says that A plus B is precisely what you said, but you just weren't specific enough. Um, has to be greater than C, generally greater than C. What, what happens if you put an equals like greater than or equal to C? What happens in that case? What if, what if A plus B equals C? Then it is the same as C. Yeah, then you just have a line. It would right? add up to C. Say that again? A and B would add up to C. Yes, a, yeah, so that, that's exactly what this, this line would mean, that a, a plus B is C. And, and in this case, then you just have, you know, A, B, sorry, my, my lines are uh, drooping, but yeah, A, a B, and C, and they would all be collinear, right? They would all lie along the same line. So it's sort of, that's why people exclude the, because, and this isn't really a triangle because it doesn't have three sides, right? It's just, it's just a line. Uh, so, so anyway, so, so triangle inequality is nice. And for those of you who have taken maybe like physics or chemistry, I'm sure you've heard of this. Um, and this is just for exposure, you know, just to show you the, the relevance, but can anyone uh, summarize this? The uncertainty um. It's from the, uh, it's like the one that says like uh, particle elements or something. I think it was, yeah, like it was, it's used mechanically. It's like um, a position X like and position momentum P. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's exactly what it is. And so it says that the uncertainty in position times the uncertainty in momentum P, okay, this is position, this is momentum. Uh, this is greater than some value, and that value is given by some constant. That's really, that's a really small number. So, so you'll see this again and again, you know, in, like later in high school and, and in college. So, so anyway, these are famous, like, inequalities. So, so inequalities are, are general. In, in this case, this means, this statement means that you can have a particle with uh, a huge uncertainty in position and a huge uncertainty in momentum, and that's still fine under this equality, but this gives a, a minimum uncertainty in the product of these uncertainties, right? This gives you some minimum value. So no particle, you can have a whole range of particles. In fact, they, if you were to plot sort of the XP plane, this is, I don't wanna get into that. I mean, this is, this is called momentum space. We don't need to talk about this, but uh, you know, th this, this, uh, this statement refers to this entire, an, an infinite number of points in this plane, a very dense infinity, right? Go, going on and on. Um, and yet, um, the statement is that this product cannot be, it actually looks like a hyperbola, okay? We don't need to go here, but um, yeah, so, so, the, so anyway, so nature, yeah, nature does kind of like equalities, but there are some things that are, are very well described with inequalities. Okay, so um, that's just sort of the big picture. Um, these, these terms like equals is, you know, the word equal, these all mean, Precisely, you know, equals. Okay, so whenever you see these things, so so equality is just one statement, but inequalities have a variety of forms, and there are four types of inequalities that we usually use. And can anyone? I mean, this should be pretty rudimentary. Can anyone sort of list the four types of inequalities? Less than. Mm -hmm. Greater than. Yes. Less than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Yay! Good. So I assume everyone knows what these mean, and uh, I'm not gonna like. Uh, summarize okay <laughs> this is uh so when we say less than we usually um this is sort of by convention that the the, the direction of the arrow but you would, you would usually say like one is less than two so it's the number on the left uh that that sort of determines uh the name of the sign if that helps okay so you, you know th this statement is also one is less than two but you would read it as one as, as two is greater than one okay so this is sort of a conventional thing okay uh, regarding the the names of these signs okay okay so solving inequalities is much like solving equations so let's we spent all of last week solving 
you know, equalities or equations. And uh, what's the solution to this equation on the, on the right here? Uh, x equals two. Yes. And so this is super rudimentary. You divide by three on both sides and, you know, six divided by three is two. Now what's the solution to this inequality? X is greater than two. Yes. And how did you do that? Uh, it's like the same thing. You, you did the, the exact same thing. You divide by three on both sides, just as we did here. And X is indeed greater than two. And now here, you know, if we were to plot our solution, we usually don't plot solutions to one dimensional problems because they're just points, right? For equalities or equations. But this, this would be like a graphical representation of the solution. And you might have like one and three, right? As other points on this, as you know, to define your scale. So, so this would be the solution. But what would this look like? This is actually kind of interesting, right? This is just a point. This is your equality. What about your inequality? How would you plot that? Anything and, that is greater than two would anything be Anything that is greater than two, but not including two, because there's no less, it's not greater than or equal to, right? It's just greater than. So the way people do that is they draw a circle around two to show that it's not included. And then they shade in the rest of the number line referring to uh, the area that's, you know, the, the part of the number line that's greater than two. So this is the convention, okay? So yes, yeah, so, so you can see that it's the same sort of problem, but we just replace the equal sign with the greater than sign. So we're gonna do a few examples like this, and then we're going to see that it's not always so straightforward, okay? Let's try this. So let's do the equality first. So what's the solution to this equation? So, someone different. Negative six. Good. So let's let's I'll just do it for people who haven't had a chance. So yes, this is negative twelve. You subtract by four, you, then you divide by two, and you get negative six. And based on our experience from the last problem, without even doing this, I would just write off sort of the answer. But if you wanted to verify, it's it's the exact same thing. You know that two x is less than negative twelve, and dividing by two gives you that. So again, your equal sign has been replaced nicely by your less than or equal to, oh, uh, sorry, less than sign. And, and how would a plot look? It would just be, you'd have negative six, maybe zero over here, and it's gonna be filled or open? Open. Open, right, because six is not included, but all these numbers are. Make sense? Yes. Let's just do a few more so people get the grasp. Uh, how, how, what's the solution to this equality? X equals two. Good, and the way you would do this, again, 30, 64 minus 32 is 32, and then, and then dividing by 16 is two. And so we, would, we can immediately also write off that x is greater than two. I'm gonna show you that this immediately writing off thing eventually doesn't work, okay? So it's dangerous, it's actually a dangerous thing to do. Um, it's, it's a bit more sophisticated than this, okay? But yeah, you would, you would get the same thing if you solve this inequality. Subtract by 32 on both sides, divide by 16, very good. Okay, now, this is a, a good question, especially for the juniors and seniors, okay? We, we're gonna talk so much more about quadratics and how to solve quadratics, but here, this is sort of an easy case because it's already factored for you. Um, so, so uh, ninth, 10th graders, like, kind of don't worry if this doesn't make as much sense yet, okay? Uh, can a junior or senior tell me this, the two solutions to this equation? X negative equals one. zero, X equals negative one. Very good. And how, how, just for the ninth and 10th graders, how the, the way these, these, uh, your older friends here have figured this out is they have used the thing called the zero product property. Okay. And we're going to talk so much more about this, but this is a brief introduction. So what junior or senior, can anyone tell me what this zero product um, product property? Basically it's like, so if anything is equal to zero and it's factored out, you can create two solutions by taking one of like a factor, like taking all the factors and taking its distribute and like just using the, and then you can use the zero product property to get both solutions. So you can like set those both equal to zero. Yeah. So you can, yeah. What you said, I'll kind of summarize. So what, who, who said that? I can't see your name for some reason. Uh, Adi. This is Adi. Okay. Thanks Adi. So when, so Adi basically said that if you have something, say some number, I'll use a for Adi. Uh, if a equals zero, and if you can factor A into some, some other components like A and B, so in other words, if A equals A times B, then A times B is also equal to zero. And you can 
you, you might remember that anything times zero is zero. So this statement actually splits into two statements. Uh, and a those two zero. statements are that either a equals zero, in which case, you know, b can be anything, right? But if a equals zero, then this thing is satisfied. And um, so either a equals zero and or b, I should really write or, or b equals zero, in which case, you know, a can be anything and this thing is, uh, this uh, equation is still true. So that's called the zero product property. And we're gonna use this like a whole lot more. So if this is new to you, it's okay, but that's how your older colleagues here have determined these solutions. They said that, okay, so this is like your big A and this is like your little A and this is your little B. And they said, okay, so if A equals zero, which it does, you know, X times X plus one is zero, then either, either A, this little A, which is X equals zero, or B, which is X minus X plus one equals zero. So X equals zero, that's where that came from. And X equals minus one, if you solve this equation for X, that's where this solution came from. Okay, so sorry to bore you to death for the juniors and seniors, but this is sort of what's going on, okay, for people who are new to this. So how would this translate to an inequality? So you might, so, so earlier we were just replacing, right? Earlier we just said, like in this example, you just replaced, right? So equals sign just became whatever sign is given by the inequality. You kind of have to think a bit more when you do this. Can we just, you know, if I were to do the same logic, I would just- X is greater than negative one. X is greater, okay, so you're saying that this might be a solution. Yes. Okay, let's, let's, let's use a, a point. Let's say, uh, let's, uh, what is it? Let's, let's try, um, let's try, isn't, um, I, I'm trying, let's see, I, I want to test your solution, but I also don't want to be confined by this. Uh, let, let's try like negative one half because negative one half is greater than negative one, right? So if you put in negative one half here, you would get negative one half plus one times negative one half and negative one half, this is one half, right? This is negative one fourth, which is indeed less than zero. So there, there might be some validity to your, to your answer. How did you get this? Um, I said, cause there's a negative. Because there's a negative. Okay, yeah, good. I think, I think, I think you're hitting on sort of the point that we're going to get to more formally, but um, that, yeah, sure, sure. That's that's a good that's a good sort of uh, interpretation. I, I know what's going on in your head, but I, I want to sort of explain this differently for now. Um, so the way one way is if you graph, if if you um, you you can graph this in two D, right? You if you if you set y equal to x times x plus one, this is just a parabola, and we're going to also talk about this a lot. Okay, and it looks and it looks like this. And again, if this is new to you, uh, hang tight, okay? But basically this thing is less than zero, right? Look, y, this is the y-axis. Y is less than zero in this entire range. And this is negative one and this is zero. So indeed, you know, that these, um, these two boundaries describe this equation, this, this inequality. So, so in, if you want to, if you want to translate kind of the way we were earlier, this the, the x equals zero one worked out well, but something funny happened with the x's negative one part because look, this sign was less than and the sign is greater than. So apparently the sign got flipped, and we're going to talk about why this happens. Um, okay, in fact, we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of. Um, Use, use an equality. So how would you solve this equality? What's, what's the solution to this equation? Multi oh, it's negative six. Yes, x is negative six because you multiply both sides by negative one. Uh, now, if I directly tried to translate this to this, just like the way we were doing in the previous problems, I would get x is less than negative six, right? Because I, I just, I took the solution, x and negative six, and I just, plop down the sign. But is this correct? Which should be greater. 
should be greater. And I'd like to illustrate this point by picking some value for X. So say, um, let, let's think of an, uh, let, uh, what, what is a number that's less than negative six? Negative 10. Negative 10, great. Uh, now let's put negative 10 in to the original equality. So this would be negative, negative 10 is less than six. What is negative, negative 10? And is that less than six? Is 10 less than six? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Good. So, so clearly this is wrong. And it turns out that whenever you multiply an, an inequality, if you multiply the entire equation by negative one, you logically have to flip the sign of the equality. So if I had this statement, a is negative a, say, is less than b. And if I wanted to find what a is in terms of b, I'd have to multiply the entire equation by negative one. See, I'm multiplying across by negative one. And but in doing this, I have to flip the sign. This is sort of a rule, okay? I would treat it like as a rule. Um, it sort of follows logically. And you, if you really want to like sh prove this sort of, it's not really a, like a, a theorem that you would prove, but it's, it's sort of a logical thing that you have to do. And I've sort of shown you by counterexample why you have to do it. Um, but yeah, you can pick your favorite numbers like A and B that satisfy this and see that in order to get like a logical statement, you have to flip the sign, okay? Uh, so, so this would be, you know, negative one times negative A is A is less than negative B. So this would be, and you can see that the, you know, the, I flip the sign um, and that I've uh, multiplied by negative one across. Okay, does, does this make sense to people? So whenever you multiply an equation and in, an inequality by negative one, you have to flip the sign. What you're, what you're really doing is you're flipping uh, the axis. You're, you're actually reflecting the entire, when you, when you multiply like, like look, if, uh, if this explanation was unsatisfying, I'll try to do a better with, with a more intuitive one. Uh, so if I were to plot this solution, it would look like this, right? X is six, and maybe this is like the point zero, right? That's, uh, yeah, X is negative six, right? This, this statement, if I were to plot the negative X, here, here I was pl plotting the plus X axis. If, if I were to plot the negative X axis, then it would be this entire statement just reflected across x equals zero. And so this is this statement, right? Negative x, this is the negative x axis, and it equals six. So here you can see that when you multiply by negative one inequality, you're reflecting, you're reflecting across x equals zero. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're doing the same thing when you do an inequality, right? Because in, see this statement, x is negative x is less than six. This refers to this part of the line, right, for negative x. And then when you multiply by negative 1, you got, you got x is greater than, what, negative 6, right? And so here you can see that we've reflected. So, so in, in, in reflecting the entire line, right, across x equals 0, the direction of this tail also gets flipped. Okay, so that's sort of a more geometric sort of understanding. Okay? Any questions? No. So great. So does that make sense to people who are new to this? Yes. Good. Okay. Let me know. Don't never never hesitate to stop me. Okay, so let's do a few examples. So uh, what's the solution to this equality? Negative five. Very good. So, so I, I just, I'll just do it for people. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, this is right. Uh, it's, it's not negative five. Um, are you, so I, okay. I, I wanted the numbers to be, but, but this is fine. We'll, we'll deal with this. Okay, so X, the solution is X is negative five thirds. Uh, you know what I meant to do was I meant to write like one, either this negative or that negative, but we'll deal with it. Later, right? Okay, so we have a fractional solution, but that's fine. It happens a lot. Uh, so this looks like this, right? Okay, I'm back in. And now, can I just go and like blindly write uh, that x is greater than negative five thirds? Is that correct? Oh, this one has a negative ten as well. So it's... oh shoot, <laughs> I just miswrote. Okay, 
I'm going to put a negative 10 there. Sorry, sorry if people are writing in pen and are going to have to scribble things out. So you're right. You're right. Good catch. I, so I meant to write a negative 10. And I just didn't. Okay. So the, yeah, now the solution would be what someone previously incorrectly said, and that's x plus 5. Okay. So would it be correct to say that the solution to this inequality is just x is greater than 5? Yeah. Yes? So x is less than 5. Yeah, x is less than five, and that's because intuitively, you know, we see this negative sign here multiplying the x. And so we know that at some point in solving this inequality, we're gonna have to multiply through by negative one. And so logically, you know, you could take your equality and just you know now flip the sign and get the right answer. But let's let's do this for people who are new to this, uh, and so they're happy as well. So if I were to start this from scratch, right, I would I would write, I would I would uh, subtract negative sides giving me this, and I would you know, divide by negative three on both sides. Well, dividing by negative three is dividing by three and multiplying by one, right? If, what, is, what is dividing by negative three? This is multiplying by negative one and dividing by three, right? It's, it's the same thing. Um, so, go ahead. Okay, no one, okay. Uh, so anyway, so my point is that in, in dividing by negative three, you are uh, essentially, you know, you're, this, this process is, is involved of multiplying by negative one, okay? Uh, so generally, you'll see that dividing or multiplying by any number uh, across an inequality uh, requires you to flip the sign, okay? And, and, and indeed, flipping the sign, you know, dividing by negative three, dividing by negative three, this is just five, and then I flip the sign. And then, you know, obviously, this is x, okay? So this is the solution. Make sense? Yes. Okay, let's just do like a few more. I know this is like very trivial to some people. Okay, so sorry if you're bored. Uh, we'll get to the more interesting things in, in a bit. So this is generally how the weeks will go in our in our camp. Uh, the first like Monday through Wednesday is sort of rudimentary things, and it, it slowly will build up. And then Thursday will be a bit more involved and maybe not even as relevant to the SAT, but it'll really engage the the older people. Okay. Okay, so what's the solution to this inequality? Uh, this, this equality? Uh, negative negative five. five. Good, yeah. And uh, the way you would do that is you'd subtract by 15 on both sides and then you'd put in you know, divide by. So again, here I'm going to ask you the same stupid question Is this the solution? No. No, what is the solution? X is greater than or equal to. Yes. And, and we know that because we see this negative multiplying the X. And we know that we're going to, in some point, have to flip the sign when we solve this equality. But let's actually solve it just, uh, you know, it's very similar to this. Um, so I would, I would, you know, do the same steps. The only thing that's different is that there's a different type of description here. And that we're going to right here flip the sign. Make sense? So if I were to plot this, I guess we didn't plot the last one, but that's okay. This is the x-axis. And this would look like what? I would have my negative 5 here, 0. Which way would this? First of all, is it, is it closed or open? Closed. Closed because of the equals. Very good. And which way does this point? To the left or to the right? To the right. To the right, yes. Because it's x is greater than 5. So all these points are greater than negative 5. Yeah? Yes. Great. OK, let's just do one more of this type. Or maybe a few more. OK, maybe let's skip this, because this is getting really boring. I have a feeling for, for many people. So you're going to get, for the ninth and 10th graders, you're going to get a lot more practice on the homework, OK? I'll, I'll do this quickly, and then I'll just show you kind of how I would do it. So let's not even solve the equality. I'll just do the inequality uh, right off the bat. So this would be 16x is greater than, and I'd add 8 on both sides, 16, and then x is greater than 1. So here, we did not have to do any sign flipping, right? Okay, and you'd plot this like this. And the reason when I plot things, the reason I draw at least one other point is to define the scale of the line of this uh, line, right? If I if I didn't have this zero, you you wouldn't have a sense of like everything is correct about this, but you, it's not a very a useful line in the sense of like you don't know where any other number is, right? This could be like point nine 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 nine. This could be negative you know, 10,000 or whatever, right? So, so I just put the zero there to define the sort of the, the size of the line, so to speak, the scale, okay? Okay, now let's do this. Um, so we, we did sort of a quadratic uh, earlier. Let's, let's try this. 
Um, what, what, how would, what's juniors and seniors, what's the solution to the, this equation here? Uh, X is equal to zero, X is equal to five. Very good, yeah. So would I just be able to, in this case, write this? No, well, one of them, one of them you can. One of them you can, which uh, one? For zero, that one's correct. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this one though. You have to switch this up. Uh, yeah, zero. I think, I think you do. And this is sort of, we're running on intuition. Let's, let's verify by just sort of doing, oh shoot, sorry. This eraser has a lag in it. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's verify, I guess. So, um, so this statement, so using the zero product property, you know, like A and B of what we talked about earlier, you would have A, which is negative X. So negative X is less than zero. Hmm, okay. <laughs> so our intuition is actually, okay, but that's okay. And then the other statement is that X minus five is less than zero. So this statement, you have to, to solve for X here, you have to multiply by negative one on both sides. And that's what you get, right? Because Negative, you're multiplying by negative one here. This just gives you X and negative, multiplying this by negative one, that gives you zero. So, so this was, so my intuition was also wrong because I just saw this X is zero and I thought of our previous example, but yeah, you actually do have to flip the sign here. And it's because of this negative sign. So, so for those of you who are new to this, don't worry about the mechanics of sort of like what we're talking about here. Okay. We're sort of, the more experienced people are sort of trying to uh, guess the solutions like very quickly, but just if this is new to you, just understand the mechanics, okay? Uh, which is all you need for the SAT, okay? So, and the solution to this is X is less than um, five. So your your solution would be, you know, open circles because these are not inclusive inequalities; these are exclusive, right? They don't include the right hand side, and it's just these numbers in between. Make sense? Yes. Okay, great. And I'm, I'm thinking, let's see, I'm, I'm thinking about this. Um, this actually might be wrong. Let's see, let, let, let's try this. This actually might be wrong. I, I have a feeling. Oh, uh, which one? Oh, uh, this, this, this question. So let, it, let's try the point three, which looks like it, it, it falls in this space, you know, three. So negative three times uh, three minus five, is that less than zero? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so we did this wrong. So where did we go wrong? So, right, this is, po this is a positive, this is six. Six is definitely not less than zero. So, so we went wrong here. What happened? Um, so like for the last, uh, the last one we did, when it was, I, I don't really understand it, for like the last one we did, Okay. We also had like a, we also flipped the sign for uh, when it was, so like if it was inside and it was negative, we somehow flipped the sign for that one. So I'm guessing that had something to do with it. If it's inside, it's, so you're saying, okay, let's see. L let's try instead of applying the zero product property before, um, let's try, uh, let's try it right off the bat. So you, applying the, sorry. Uh, let's wait. Let, let's first multiply this entire equation by negative one. So if I if I multiplied this by negative one and this by negative one, right, to get rid of this negative sign, then we'd have, and then I'd have to flip this sign because I multiplied by negative one, right? Some, something is something is going on here. That's okay. I hmm. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, let me, this is actually a really good question because I am having a hard time with it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get back to everyone. Okay, so let's do some other, let's do some other questions and then I'll think about this and let you know tomorrow. And in fact, uh, if others want to think about this with me and then come out with a solution, because we know what the solution should be, right? It should be X is less than zero and X is greater than five. Okay. Okay, so so let, let's let's think let's think about this and then reconvene. Okay, it's x is greater than zero and less than five. Isn't that the right answer? We we just showed we just showed with the point uh, three. You know, x is three. That that's not that's not the, the right answer. 
It's not right. no solution. If you put in, if you put in three, which which is in that range that you said, Gabe, uh, you know you got you got a false statement. Right. I, I just did it here. Minus three times three minus five. This is negative two. So this is this is a positive number. Anyway, we'll we'll we'll, we'll think about it. This is actually really good. I you know I, this is it's kind of fun when I have to think about things too, right? This is learning for all of us. So okay, so let's just talk about briefly about two D inequalities. So so far, all of these were inequalities on the line, right? These were all one D. What about if we include like a second variable like y? Okay. So this is this is where all the discussion from last week about linear equations. This is all going to be very useful now, okay? Uh, because what is this, right? If we were to do the same sort of analogy to equalities. Um, then we would just have our good old parent function of the line, right, for this particular equality. And what does this look like if you were to graph it? A diagonal line. Okay, so Matthew said you don't take out the negative. You have, so, okay, so we're going to talk about this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Matthew said in the chat, if you look, you don't take out the negative, you have x minus 5 less than and negative x is less than zero. Okay, so, so, okay, so it could be that I made a, okay, let, I guess we are gonna talk about this because people seem to be interested. Um, this is actually my favorite part about teaching when I have to figure something out in front of you, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, I think not negative five is, okay, I'm not sure what you mean by the last little bit there, but, um, okay, let, let's just try it again. So, so if I, um, so if I apply the zero product property first, then I would have this statement, um, right? Is it, Matthew, do you agree so far? Is this what you were saying? Yes, okay. I, I think this is what I did the first time. And then how do you deal with this? The negative x is less than zero? This is just, yeah, and this is what you said, x is greater than zero. And x is, so this is what we got the first time. How, how'd you get, here, you're saying that x is less than negative five, but I don't, I don't see how you got that. Because, um, you know, if you were applying the zero product property correctly, then these are your two factors. I meant five, okay, so you, you meant five. So that's exactly the solution we got. Uh, and for some reason it's not. I, th I think I'm overlooking something, but yeah. Uh, so okay, so you're you're on board with the rest of us. Um, I got the I have the inequality form. The inequality form. Can you the, elaborate? Um, like zero is less than x less than five. Zero is less than x, which is oh, so you think that is the solution? Yeah. But didn't we just see that it isn't? Yeah, that I'm not sure about that. Okay. 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 So we'll we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this next time. But think about it. Okay. I'll think about it too. Okay. So just just to cover this last little topic. Okay. Um, so th this at y equals x. This is the parent function of the line, and it looks like that, right? We talked about this all last week, and you would have all these points like one comma one, two comma two, so so on and so forth. As an inequality, this you know you'd plot the same line. And in fact, shade you, region, right? And you would shade the region and uh, to to which this uh, describes. So the y values that are greater than the x values here. Look, this is the point one one. This take another point that's not on the line. Like this would be one comma two. This is a y. This is a uh, a point where the y value is greater than the x value, and and so. All of these points, this point, this point, this point, this point, all of these points satisfy this, this inequality for the same reason, right? You can see that the y value for all these points is greater than the x value. And instead of drawing an infinite number of points, which would be a very dense infinity in 2D, we just, we just shade. <laughs> so my shading is really bad and ugly, but this is sort of... The, it's either, go ahead. Uh, it's, either, it's easier to say that um, if y is greater... Then you shade above, and then if y is less, then you shade. 
Yeah, you, yeah, you can say that. Um, that that can kind of be confusing because like sometimes it's like sometimes you have a line like this, okay? So this is your x and y, and it's like okay, what is above? So sometimes people have a hard time seeing what's above and below because it, here it looks more like left and right, you know. You're still right that yeah, this is technically above the line and this is below the line. Uh, but I, 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 I remember being confused about this like a lot, you know, when I was in high school, like middle school, high school kind of. So that's why that's why I just gave this explanation that I did. If you just take a sample point, like one two or like one ten, if that also satisfies this, so obviously ten is greater than one. So uh, indeed, this entire region would uh, satisfy the. But yeah, you're right. If if that works for you, then and if you can avoid these confusing parts, great. Okay, and and then how, how, just modifying this question, how would y uh, greater than x look like? So all I was, you know, how, if I were just to make uh, uh, greater than equal to sign, just a uh, greater than sign, how would that change this graph? Uh, the line would be like cut. Yeah, the line would be dashed, and so we would. Uh, j that's sort of the convention. People, when when you don't include, so if now I'm changing the problem, if I don't include the equal to sign, then the solutions don't actually lie on this line, but they lie just next to the line and going on and on this way. So we usually use a dashed line to graphically represent that. Okay. Great. So let's just do a few examples and then we'll do your quiz. Okay. So if I were to graph, so now you can see where everything we're talking about last week becomes very relevant. Use a sign line. Aditya said use a sign line. Yeah, you can. Okay. So we'll talk more about that. I think I know what you mean. Um, here we have truly 2D problems. Um, so it's worth our time to actually graph the, the shape of the function. But yes, we'll, we'll talk more about what you're, I think what you're describing when we talk about polynomials, okay, and cubics and uh, vortex, okay? Um, so how would this look? Where, what's the y-intercept of this one? Uh, it would be at uh, positive one, and then it would be because that's climbing two. And your slope is two, right? So it's kind of steep. And where does it cut? Where does it go here? Well, remember, the x-intercept is what? Minus b over m. And what is that? Negative one half. So this is the point one, negative one half zero. This is the point zero one, so on. We spent all last week with this. So this is the equality. Now we're complicating things by asking what the inequality looks like. So how will this look? First of all, will the line be solid or dashed? Dashed. Yes, and so here, sorry, I kind of drew it dashed, but it should be a solid line. Here it's dashed because we don't have an equality. We have just the greater to, gr greater than. So imagine that's a nice dashed line. And then to the left side. To the left. What did that the, mean? Sh the shaded region is to yeah, the left side. But, see, see what, what I mean? Okay, you're, you're right. <laughs> but when we describe things to the left and to the right, that, that can lead to like conceptual misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, you know I what I mean? Understand. Because you're actually, what you're actually describing is above and below, right? The line. Y, y is in a vertical direction. It's, it has no horizontal like motion, sense of uh, directionality. It's so just it's like line. easier to understand it's, that it's, way. It's easier to, yeah, you're, yeah. It's easier to sort of tell someone, right? Because yeah, to me, this is like the left side of the line, yeah. but um, that, can be, that can be kind of, that uh, can lead to misunderstanding. Okay, so it's, it's technically it's above the line and, and this is above the line, okay? But you're right. Does this make sense? Okay, let's, let's do one more. I think, let's see. I think I might've had it. Okay, there were a few more questions. Um, this is so slow, this, this computer. Okay, let's just do maybe two more. Um, so I'll do this kind of fast. Okay, this is your slope. Sorry, this is your y-intercept, uh, three, and then your slope is negative four, so the line looks like this. The x-intercept, notice I'm drawing the line first. I'm not doing, I'm not thinking about the uh, inequality. Uh, the x-intercept is minus b over m, which is minus three over minus four, which is three-fourths. So this point is three-fourths comma zero. And because we're talking about less than, we're going to talk below the line. And if if you are confused about you know about like whether you shade above or below, just pick some points. So pick zero zero. That that looks like it's below the line. 
does zero zero satisfy this, this uh, inequality? Zero is less than zero plus three. Is zero indeed less than three? Yes. So this this ID would want to shade. Make sense? Great. So I'm sort of doing these for you. Okay. Now now here is here is one where we're gonna have to think a little bit. If we wanted to write this in the form y equals mx plus b. So both sides by negative one. Yeah, so, so my point is that this is not in this form yet because of this minus sign. So we're gonna have to yeah, multiply or divide, same thing, by uh, negative one on both sides of this equation. And what do we do when we do that? We have to flip the sign. The sign. Yep, and so this is negative five plus three. If you didn't do this, you got a, uh, you get the right line. Uh, you get the right line, but you get the wrong shading. Okay, if you didn't catch that sign change. Okay, so what does this look like? Your slope. Uh, sorry, your y-intercept and uh, your slope negative five. So the line looks like this, and uh, this point is negative b over m, which is three fifths, right? And the shading is less than so. Very, very similar to the last example. Uh, this line is just a bit steeper, right? Same, it's actually parallel. Uh, no, it's not parallel to this line, but it passes through the point zero three. Okay, uh, let's see. What else is worth? Let's 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 do this, and then we'll and then we'll take your quit. Okay, so so this this problem. Okay, so we sort of talked about this, but for the eleventh and twelfth graders, you should you should kind of be interested in this. Um, so what, what is this a line? First of all, does this does this uh, sort of so would 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 this represent a line? Yes, no, maybe. It would be a quadratic. It would be a quadratic. Very good. Why? And we're going to talk way more about this, but yeah, uh, the highest degree. Yes, Tanisha. Yeah, uh, the highest. If you if you were to distribute this, uh, yeah, distribute this, you'd have. So you also Ys, um, then negative x squared minus three x. That's that's right. Yeah. So I, I just wrote that. But yeah, that's that's absolutely right. Uh, and your highest degree is two, which we're going to talk a lot more about quadratics. But we talked about how lines have the highest degree one, right? So if, you know, but but now that we have the highest, uh, the high, you know, the highest um, exponent on x as two, this is no longer a line, and it's indeed a parabola. So this is why, you know, 11th and 12th graders, this is really for you. 9th and 10th graders, just hang tight. Okay, so this looks like, what are, what are the solutions to this? Uh, it should be what? Well, um. So the solutions mean y, the, the points at which y equals zero. So, so this is your x-axis. This computer is so slow. I don't know what the deal. Okay, this is, the, the x-axis is the same thing as y equals zero. Right, so when you set y equal to zero, what are the solutions to that equation? You should all juniors, um, you should be yeah. all over this. It should be negative three is equal to x and x is equal to zero. Very good. So I'm gonna just put the points where they are negative three, zero. Not, not equals because it's a, a inequality. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. So, so this is I'm talking about the equality here, um, and then we'll talk about the inequality. So uh, and then how does the graph look? Uh, we're, we're, I guess we'll talk about Side that. out quadratic. Yeah, exactly. And we're, if you're confused, don't worry, because this is actually not the topic of this lecture. This is sort of extension, okay? And now you have this less than sign. So that means that this should really be a dashed line, okay? So imagine this is dashed, and then above or below? Below. Below. So it's actually this entire space. And... Um, Anyway, yeah, we'll talk about the sort of implications, but it's actually really useful. This, this shape is really useful in engineering and stuff. Uh, in 3D, it's called a paraboloid. Uh, like uh, telescopes, telescope dishes, the, this, this describes sort of the, in 3D, the volume, in 2D, the area inside a uh, telescope, like a telescope mirror. So, so anyway, so yeah, so this is really for the juniors and seniors. Uh, now, regarding that one question, I'll... Um, I'm going to think about it right after this. If I'll stick around for a few minutes. Um, okay, Adit, you, you just, okay, so I'm going to send out the quiz so people who are not interested can, can go and, you know, take it and leave. And people who are interested, 
uh, can stick around. And let's talk about this question that's mystifying. And Aditya, I'll, I'll get to your. Okay, so I just sent out the quiz link. Uh, enjoy, it's five questions. Okay, so um, Aditya, I'm gonna read your thing. For the weird question you were talking about before, if X is less than five and, and I guess what you mean, greater than zero, the product negative times negative is therefore positive and not less than zero. Whereas if it is below three, it's plus minus. I'm here. Why don't you go back to that so I can see the writing and we can sure, sure. Let's, let's go back. Okay. Yeah, this is a fun question. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of amused. Well, I, I, I think you answered it, but let me tell you why, I think. Okay, here yeah. it is. There it is. It's kind of blurry. Okay. I don't know why. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay, so so go ahead. Yeah, so so Aditya had some suggestion and I'm Aditya, do you have a microphone? Could you could you talk us through what you're saying? Are you, are you talking to me? Yeah, I guess. I, I guess I was I wanted to hear what Aditya had to say because it seemed like he figured out what's going on. But Gabe, yeah, let's so so Aditya, what what um what are you exactly saying? Yeah, because if it's uh, if x is less than um, five and over zero, the product like so, the both factors will be negative, and then multiplied together, it'll be positive, which will yeah, be. So, so exactly, uh, we tried that. So from what I'm understanding, you're saying let's just take up. That's why. That's why that doesn't work. That's why that doesn't work. That's why uh, x can't. That's why that answer doesn't work. That x. Right. Right. So we showed. We showed that. Mm -hmm. We showed that with three, with the number three, which is between these two. Yeah. So, so you're right. Yeah. You're, everything you said is correct. So. But then, uh, I was just saying on the lower end, uh, if you if it's less than uh, what's it called? Um, if it's less than zero, mm -hmm. then then it works because uh, then that x factor is zero and then you have sorry that x factor is positive and then you have a negative on the x minus five factor so then you have positive and negative and that'll make it negative so and then the same be... thing except flipped on the other side right right yeah so if you put in a negative value for x like negative one then this would be positive one and this would be negative and you have yeah so so clearly yeah we know like intuitively sort of where the solution yeah. was, but why did our, we're trying to figure out like why this approach did not work. Okay, so. I think it go ahead. might just because it's an inequality rather than an equality, it's harder to tackle it just by isolating. Well, I, no, I, I, okay, okay. Well, I think it can be definitely done. <laughs> um, we're just trying to figure out where, okay, so, so people are saying bye, but yes, okay. Uh, stick around if uh, I think so basically if you so the five like x minus five if you if there's uh, I put it in like some solver and it's saying that um, like x minus five is like put into one big parenthesis and then it's like subtracting that entire parenthesis to like he's you're moving the entire parenthesis into zero so okay so you can't really do that because th there's a time sign here so here let me let me rewrite this I know, so first they so uh they said so x became um this thing so x got they got the solution for x as x is greater than zero and then they took the x minus five put it in one parentheses and then moved it to the other side so then and they got x is less than five right <laughs> they got let's see Uh, they got x is less than negative five. Okay, so what they did was they 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 attached this negative one to this this term. Yes. So they they just it's the same exact thing, I think. Uh, so they sort of did this. Uh, it's less than zero, and That's so yeah, exactly what it looked like. Yeah. Right. So so the zero product property gives you this statement, and also this statement and this statement, sorry, this is zero. And this statement becomes this, which is it. 
So that's, that's exactly what we had. Uh, wait, it's not, it's not. I haven't, I haven't. Uh, that's the right answer. Oh, it's right. This is the right answer? Yeah. Yeah, it actually, yeah. yeah. Um, and they use this, they didn't even use a zero product property here. They use something called the, it's called the, the PQ stigma rotation. I have no idea what that is. Me neither. Um, I don't know how else you would do this. Okay, so, so why did, why did, this is very strange. Why did this work and this not work? Oh. They're seemingly the same. Um, you know, this, uh, you know, the same huh? I guess it's because like the, actually, I think another way we could have done it is we could have like distributed it inside. <laughs> sure, sure. So, so you're saying. Yeah, like, I think next. that's actually the way you could probably do it. Right, and, and, and in which case that's that's identical to yeah to last approach, so so yeah so hmm. oh okay hmm. um, yeah so if you were to plot this uh, so so try let's try the graphical method so okay so we're happy with this solution if we were to plot this um, it would go the same direction both lines go the same direction I'm not sure what you mean like if you plotted it like the so it would both be open circles and they would both go the exact same way. So like X is greater than zero would go to the right and X is less than five would go to the right. Sorry, X is greater than, no, like X actually, is greater than five. It's, it's, it's not that way, right? It, it's, uh, they're, they don't both go the same way. Oh, okay, so yeah, sorry, sorry, I, I couldn't say that. Okay, uh, yeah, so, so the graph, you know, if you were to like assign a second variable, like Y, so we could plot this in 2D, um, I think it's easier to see uh, this is like, um, yeah, ne negative X, you know, you, you could read, okay. So, so this is kind of the convenient way to write this. And um, these are your zeros and this is a parabola that, yeah, yeah, okay, this, this makes sense. And this is a parabola that faces down. And so Y is less than zero for this range. You know, so you can see Y is less than zero here and Y is less than zero here. So graphically it makes sense and then just and just choosing this way to do it makes sense. But I'm still kind of um, I'm unhappy. confused on that way as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like what what uh, what what is like wrong about what we did here? Like there is no there is nothing wrong. I don't know how that uh, how we did that. Right. I got an idea. Go I got an idea. Oh. Gabe. Go ahead. Okay. This is slightly philosophical idea, but I. Just looking at that very original equation, okay, right? That's the way you had it in black, the minus x, etc. Yes, that. Mm -hmm. We know that anytime you multiply, you know, the left side by minus one, you got to flip the inequality sign. Okay. Right. So yes, in your written solution. You said minus x is less than zero, and then x is of course greater than zero, which follows that rule. I'm suggesting that you've used up your your minus one equ is equivalent to a, a sign of, fly, uh, of uh, flipping the sign, because if you're gonna do the minus one times x minus five, with the x minus five term, you, you multiply by minus one also, then in fact, you've multiplied the left term by minus one times minus one again. So you don't need to flip the sign. You don't need to flip the sign on the x minus five. Isn't that what I did though? I didn't, hmm? that's, that's what I did. I, I didn't flip the, the uh, but I, I didn't flip the Yeah, you, you're right. You. That's what you did. You did not. But isn't that the right answer? No, no, this is wrong. This is, this is wrong. This gives us the wrong range, right? This gives us, yeah. this gives us this space, which is, yeah. Which is not right? This, no, this no, space is not. And we, we, we use the point three, you know, to show that you know, three is not less than zero. Uh, try doing four, maybe. Okay, so four, okay, sure. I don't think it'll be different, but. I so mean, just so minus try. four is, is mine. Why don't you recheck that? It, it's, it's got to be. A, it's got to be between zero, 0 and 5, uh, is it not? No, no, no. So, so, so sorry. So, um, so we showed, okay, so I, I showed that it's not with the point. Minus 4 is less than 0, and 4 minus negative 1 is less than 0. That would be right. 
No, because minus four. Oh, yeah, yeah, flips. Plus, yeah, flips the same. That's, yeah, that's greater than zero. So, so yeah. the, using the point like four, for example, you'd have minus four times you know, four minus five. So this is minus one, this is four. Oh. So that's positive. So clearly, no, so we tried two numbers and one, one counter example is enough, right? Yeah. yeah so, okay, so that, that, can't, that can't work. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, so in terms of what you know, went wrong in my first approach, um, yeah, I see, Gabe, I, see, I think I see what you mean. Like, yeah, you, you only use the negative one once, so to speak, right? right. One factor of negative one. And, and you've, you've, you know, you've done a great job on this because I never really looked at this, that this is like a quadratic equation. So indeed, the answers have to be in a range defined by an upper and lower point. I never really saw that though you did this, which is great. So I'm just going by that. Are you sure you didn't draw that upside down, that curve? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so here, actually, here, let, let me... Um, why don't you, why don't you, yeah. I'll share, I'll, I'll do a graph. I'll just share my entire screen and then we'll, we, can, we can look at this. So uh, can you see my screen? Like, yeah. okay, so negative. Uh, yeah, do a simple X, Y thing and replot that curve. Maybe it's yeah, yeah, better sure. now. Sure. All these negatives get messy. So minus X times. Oh, I feel what I just used. That's even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these things are, these things are great. Uh, so you'll see. That, uh, okay, is, le uh, is, is less than y. There we go. Okay, so you drew it the right way. So, so this is this is the two dimensional analog. So um, that's the correct way. Uh, right. Uh, okay. This this might be confusing in two D, but let, if here uh, in one D, yeah, this is this is the case. So yeah, um, it's you know it's plotting. It's a two dimensional plotter. But so you have your uh, yeah. So this is the right. So x is less than zero. X is greater than. It, it 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 has to be bounded, yes. Well, it's not. It's it's not bad. It's a. Uh, if I if I think I am understanding what you're saying, like it's not. Um, yeah, it's it's unbounded. It there are there are thirteen different ways to do it. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I'm happy with you know the the graphing kind of thought, and then but not the like the way this to is get this it. is very strange. Like the, you know, there shouldn't be one way to. Like, you know, this approach should give you the same answer. I'm just, I feel like I'm overlooking something very silly. You know, if, if one way to solve, one way to, here, may I like kind of go off to the side here? Yeah, yeah. Messy. So minus x, uh, x minus five, right? One, one way to do the, is that the same? Let me make sure I'm writing it down right. Yeah, okay. So one way to do this, you know, so using the zero product property, everyone agrees uh, that this is true, right? There, there's no, there's no like denying this statement. This, this has to be true, right? Um, by the zero product property. Uh, one way to solve this type of equation is you can add x on both sides, you know, and you, you don't have to multiply by negative one, in other words, and adding x on both sides gives you this statement, which is, which is correct. Um, so, so, and then, and then this, you know, X is greater than, oops, I don't know what happened there. Here you have X is less than five. So, so here, um, okay, so there, <laughs> there are more problems, okay. Yeah. So now this is giving us the right statement. This isn't, uh, huh. No, that one's also not giving you the right statement, saying X no, is greater than zero. Oh, you're right, X, it, yeah, so it's like X, my bad, my bad. Yeah, this is saying that X is greater than zero. So, okay, so this is the, sorry, this is the same, um, yeah, this is the same as the original. Okay, so what are other people saying here? Okay, Ria, you said the solver that I'm using says that you have to multiply by negative one on both sides first, right? Yeah. So, okay. Because that, that works. Then, okay, so. Uh, okay. But then even then, if you do it, right. the way that he he's doing it, you'll still get the same answer, the wrong yeah. answer. So you still get, you get X is greater than five and yeah. In fact, this is even. So I think, I think the only way to do it is by using that like parentheses property. What's, what was it called? The this rotation property or something. Yeah, yeah, like doing it this yeah. way. This, is, this yeah. is very strange to me because to me, like this is algebraically correct. We, we keep getting different solutions. I've always done it the way that, what's it called, that I put in the chat where you use. Basically the basic uh, way, yeah. Everybody, yeah, everybody bound. Like that. Yeah, yeah that, that also gave the wrong answer though, right? No, it didn't. Because oh, it, did, uh, it, did. it was you, you got uh, 
You got this. I got X is less than zero and X is greater than five. You did? Mm-hmm. Because it shows oh, that uh, no. whenever you're in between those two, zero and five, you'll always get a solution that is a negative number times a negative number and is positive, which is not less than zero. Right, but but you did this by inspection. You didn't do this like... Okay, okay, yeah. that makes sense. But we, we would like to be able to do these algebra problems yeah. yeah, always by inspection. Like, it's nice if you have the good... And answer. if you can do it by inspection, it's just faster than the SAT, so that's pretty good. Right, right, but it, wouldn't it be nice mathematically to... Yeah, I'm actually pretty stuff. confused. So if anyone like has any thoughts, please, uh, like in terms of the actual math here, like what, you know, why doesn't this work? Um, oh, oh, I, I, th I think I know. Okay. So, um, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I think I understand. So, so generally if you have like X squared is always greater than zero, right? Yes. And so, okay. So the, the trick here, what the, this rule of multiplying by negative one on both sides, applies for linear things or th like uh, polynomials that have- Are you saying it doesn't uh, apply, apply to- Yeah, it doesn't apply to quadratic things, okay, right? So okay. like, for example, like if you had, uh, let's just use like two numbers, like, uh, okay, like negative one is less than one, I don't know. Or here, let's, so it's not confused, let's do negative two is less than two. This is a true statement, right? But if you square both sides, um, yeah, yeah and it becomes four is, not, four is not less than four. Four is equal to four, right? Oh. So, so these rules yeah. change. So, so in other, if you were to multiply, first of all, this statement is wrong. Yeah, that, that can't be right. Um, <laughs> second of all, if you were to multiply both sides by negative one here, you would have two is is greater than negative two, and if you were to multiply both sides, you would have a very wrong statement, right? Of four is also great. This is this is like purely contradictory because this is saying that four doesn't equal four. So clearly, the rules of uh, like multiplying when you multiply by one on both sides, clear that that, that doesn't apply for quadratic or or even degree like polynomials. Or actually, so then can you, can you are you saying that you basically you can't multiply when it's in that yeah, form? You, well, you don't flip the, the the sign flipping like this business, right? Look, look. If if I if I had x is greater than zero and then I wanted to multiply both sides by negative one, you just have negative x squared is. <laughs> what would the sign be? <laughs> now, now, we know that the sign has to be this, right? Yeah. Because if we were to plot it, uh, like, I mean, pick, pick any two you numbers. You could, right? I think, I'm not completely sure, but you could solve them as two separate inequalities. So this is what we were doing earlier. And yeah, so you were, you're saying like this? Um, no, like you could literally, like, literally just split, like, so you could split it off into two different, like entirely two different qualities. Like uh, it would be.